Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. So, um, today we're moving on to the code a little bit. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of code to fix some art. And uh, once we're done with that, we can go ahead and fix some of the bigger bug we have. Uh, again, I've, I'm hearing a bug about the save state that's not working properly, so we're gonna go fix that ASAP. And, uh, well, let me just get into the, the today's episode. Um, so here we have a tower that is square shaped, so it has like a bigger hit point than usual. Once we enter the actual game, it's back to its normal size, the one that we see in the preview. So it actually just fits the scene. And uh, say we go inside of the game, it takes its current, not its current, but it takes the uh, usual shape back because it has a really huge hit point level. So we fix that and we also add icons on top of the uh, tower whenever you're dropping something, then um, it does that little icon and then it shows what it dropped. So guys, that's what we do today and without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright guys, so today what I'd like to do is actually address some of the um, some of the problem I have here with this tower in the back. So we're going to be jumping into code a little bit and just modifying the scale. Let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, let's just go ahead and increase the hit point by quite a lot. And then if we go back to our game scene, our menu scene, as you can tell, our tower is a little bit more uh, fat and it takes all the place. So every time I'm in the hub scene, I like to actually resize that to its normal thing. And when we join the game scene, then uh, resize it to what it should be. So let me open up the hub manager for a second and we're going to go see what we can do with that. And um, now the rescaling happens inside of the, the tower script, so we're going to open that as well. Rescale, so rescale tower. And uh, now what rescale is going to do is we're going to have like a boolean in here. Bool is small is equal to false by default. And now we're going to say if is small is true, then the new scale in X is going to be um, so base tower width and that's it. Else we're going to take the actual value we should take. And we're going to do the same exact thing down here. So if is small, then new scale in Y is equal, equal to um, the range, the base tower height and else we do the typical new scale. I was just trying to make it clear but of course you can be putting it in the same if statement so I'll just be taking that, putting it here and same thing for this line. So something of the sort. Alright now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside of the hub manager and whenever we start that hub manager right here we're gonna say the tower that instance rescale tower and we're gonna set in the true parameter just like that and now I think we've got all our problem fixed so let's go ahead and go in the game the tower is its actual size right now that's fine now we enter it's at its smallest and if we go in the game it is also at its smallest so we're gonna call another resize um, when we enter the game and we can do that through the game manager at the start of course so the tower dot instance rescale tower and we don't need to send in any parameter because um, the is smallest boolean is false by default so if we don't send anything it's just gonna be like oh so you're not sending me anything that means it's gonna be false and now it's small and now it's back to being is little uh, squarish shape. Now the second thing I'd like to fix is actually just uh, this UI here overlapping the other one so that's obviously something I should not have done and for some reason it just uh, I didn't really see it when it happened. So the currency wave text and also the enemy left to spawn are going to have like a small margin in terms of Y and uh, I'll just do it manually so something like this and now that's gonna be it uh, looking fine. Alright, so let's tackle another bug we have. Well, not really a bug, but a uncompleted feature that we have whenever we're playing the game. So say we're killing some stuff, and we loot something. We should be able to loot something fairly soon. I'm just going to increase my luck. Okay, here it is. So as you can see, um, 
We're popping an icon above the tower, but we don't really have any indication of what we just loot, and that would be great. So that's what I'm really trying to achieve here. I have some kind of icon popping on that. And um, to do that, we're going to go back in the game scene. I think it's in game scene. I think, I think it's actually just a uh, prefab as well. So we're going to look for a prefab. And I'm thinking about... It's combat text, I believe, and combat text has a loot image. So whenever we do pop that comeback text uh, prefab, we have to assign it a loot image. Now let's find out where exactly we put that. I've opened up the enemy.cs script, then in the remove enemy we're calling loot manager instance. So I'll go inside of that. And then inside of the loot manager we go inside of the text manager instance.show. So let's actually have a look at that. And uh, this is where we instantiate a image. Now what we send in is a sprite null, if I remember correctly. Uh, let me go back fairly quickly. So we were in the loot manager. Drop item. We send a new sprite that really has nothing in it. So right here we need to find out what it is exactly that we're sending. So we do a loot index and uh, we do a random in between 0 and 8 or 13 I believe. Now we need to find out a way to actually get the loot sprite using that number. Now I've been looking around for a little bit and I, I can't actually find a place where we save those um, those images. So what I did is I went inside of the stats helper and then over here just above that I'll do a, um, a public array of sprite, so public sprite array like that and I will call them loot sprites. Now if I go inside of the game I find my stats helper which is on the preloader and on the tower, here it is, that's the stats helper. We should now have the loot sprite and if I input 13 in there and I just drag and drop every single one of those in the good order, so loot icon rock is the first one, then loot icon log and so on. If I just do that then um, from pretty much anywhere I want in my code since we have an instance of the stats helper I should be able to access those simply using the index, uh, the number right next to it, so loot icon say 7. And since they're zero base then uh, it's going to work with the code we're trying to put right now. So we're almost done. Just need some unicorn here, cat and foxes. Now once we have these inside of an array we can now go back to our code which was under the enemy script, no it was under the here, under the um, loot manager. And then once we're in here, we are going to say, we're not sending in a new sprite anymore, this is not going to work. So we're going to send in stats helper dot instance and then get the sprite, the loot sprites. Add the index, loot index. Now I'm not sure if this is going to work just yet, but uh, we're going to enter the show function and try to, to see if it's going to work. So over here we do a dot sprite is equal to image, image is equal to the sprite we send, so technically it should replace the image we have. Let's give this a try. Speed this up. And as you can tell we see a little bit color here but <laughs> it's really hard to tell, it's really small. Let's increase the lock a little bit. And we need some more damage. But yeah, as you can tell, we do get something. It's just really, really hard to tell because we really, um, our icons, they're all the same color. And as you can tell, it's just not so great looking. Okay. So what I feel like doing is actually um, incrementing the size of that. And I think we can through the prefab. So if we head over to the, the um, loot image, we can say that the width is going to be like 70 and 70. And since we're here, I'm also going to take the combat text and just drop it on the canvas so I can see it. And while it is on the canvas, I'll modify it by hand. So say we want, uh, let's just put that 100 by 100 because that's the size of our image. Now beneath that, there is the plus image, which we are not really using just yet. But let's increment the size of that. Change the actual icon to our plus sign. And I'd like to just put it green this time. 
So something of the sort. And then we can go ahead and just hit apply so we can override all the changes we've made. Back in our game, hopefully this is going to be um, a little bit more easy to see. And it is. It's quite awful actually, so we can reduce the size of it. Um, but as you can tell, we now get a better result and uh, we can actually see what's going on. So maybe even something that you'd like to do is maybe not even have it um, pop above the tower, but have it pop somewhere fixed. Somewhere that doesn't really like take a lot of space. So you could be putting it up here, like that line. Spawn it there and it just goes up. You could be doing that, that would be fine. Um, of course, it's always up to you. If you want to modify the place where it spawns, all you really got to do is um, modify it through the enemy script. Where is it? It's exactly... Um, oh, sorry, not the enemy, the drop item. Yeah, you got to be changing it over here. And um, I'm also going to increment that a little bit so it spawns one meter above what it used to. If I can type. Okay, my numpad is missing up a little bit. But uh, here we go. So that's going to be my new place where I spawn. And I'm also going to reduce the size to 80, 80. Leaving the plus sign as it is. I don't mind the plus sign. Oh, and I didn't hit apply. So that's not going to work. There we go. So we should have fixed those little bugs. And um, that's pretty much where I will end today's episode. And guys, uh, if you enjoy as always, please hit the like button. Really appreciate that. If you um, like to ask a question, just do that in the comment section below. And also check out the Patreon page if you wish to support me. That would be very, very cool. Other than that, please uh, subscribe for more tutorials like these. And I will see you guys in the next episode.